Psalm 150. Now, finally, this is not only the doxology of the last book of Psalms. You know, Psalms divided into five books. The Genesis section, the Exodus section, Leviticus section, number section, and then the Deuteronomy section. So at the end of each and every section, there was a doxology. So this 150 is likened to a doxology for the last section. But not only for the last section, but this is also the doxology for the whole book of Psalms. From Psalm number 1 until Psalm 150. And this is also known as the Hallelujah Chorus. Many times we have sung, all oh, this within us, praise His name. So, I like the way it is divided. Um, where to praise God, verse 1. What to praise God for, verse 2. How to praise God, verse 3 to 5. Who is to praise God? Verse 6. Simple, right? Uh, this is another Sunday sermon. Huh? <coughs> okay. Verse 1. Now, before then, uh, I mentioned the word Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do not know whether you are familiar with other languages and have seen other Bibles or attend other churches, different language, I mean, different countries, different languages, and so on. But I noticed one thing. I think you do also. The word Hallelujah in all the different languages uh, is still Hallelujah. Right? Uh? Here we say Jesus, there they say Yesu, and this and that. So many other things. Jesua. But Hallelujah is Hallelujah. You know why? All you people, all the world, all creation, praise the Lord. It's Hallelujah. So, praise the Lord. And, uh, where are we? Okay, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Now, praise the Lord. First line is a command. We all know that. It's, it is not a suggestion. Um, then we have praised the Lord in His sanctuary. So you praise under shelter in His sanctuary. This we do with hands open and so on, with musical instruments. And so on. We, we have learned all this in the previous Psalms of uh, David. Okay, so I teach you one more Hebrew word, Yada. Y A D A H. Y A D A H. It means to worship with extended hands. To worship with extended hands. Yada. And so we Yada God or we Yada Yahweh in His sanctuary. We praise Him in His mighty firmament. Mighty firmament is where? Outside. Outside. Firmament means, if you, have it, if you read uh, Genesis and so on, it speaks of the expanse of the heaven. Expanse of heaven. The firmament. You read Genesis chapter 1, you find the word firmament quite often. The expanse. Heaven is expansive, expanse of the heaven. So, you praise Him indoor, you praise Him outdoor. Means what? You praise Him everywhere. That's what it means. Not just, ah, Friday cell group, ah, nobody watching. Okay, well, then we, we, we. And then we turn on the, the, the cassette player, the cassette player sing louder than you, how okay. <laughs> You play CD, you play MP3, play whatever. But that is only to set the background. But it is to come out from our lips and from our hearts and from our being. 
So, where to praise Him? In His sanctuary and in His mighty firmament, in the expanse of heaven. Because in Psalm 148, even the angels and the hosts in the heights up there, the sun and moon and so on, they are all praising Him up there. So, praise Him. So, that is where to praise Him. Next, what to praise Him for? What to praise Him for? Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His great, to His excellent greatness. But, if you have been studying all this, you know, first we praise Him for who He is. Then we praise Him for what He has done. He has always been in that structure. But the young, immature Christian will praise Him always only for what He does. And then, not praise Him for what He doesn't do. So He gets upset. God, you never did this for me, so I don't want to praise you. Yeah. But we praise Him for who He is and what He has done. So, praise Him for His mighty acts. And you know, He parted the Red Sea, they crossed the River Jordan, He provided food for them, and so on. You know all this. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. You do not know as much as the Jews because they lived through all this persecution. They and their forefathers experienced all the miracles of God. Their praise is more intense than ours. You look at the Six Day War, you look at the Golan Heights, you look at the West Bank and so on. Every day they are living in a war state. Even the kids are alerted. The moment siren, uh, they go into bomb shelter. They take a bus, also they got to be careful in case somebody strap himself. In the last, I think, couple of weeks, there were also some uh, disturbance at the mosque, right? The golden yeah, the dome there. Is it? They are living in a war state. So when they come together to praise God, they really mean it because if not for God, they will be put asunder. They really treasure it. But for us, it's just, you know, sing a song, sing another song for so long. Okay, sit down. You know. <laughs> but when they sing, they really mean it. So we should do likewise. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Now, how to praise Him? Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. And I think our Pastor John must have read this many times, so it's very loud. <laughs> okay, anyway, if you find it too loud, like me, put some ear plugs. Because the, the, the concern is people at the back, they cannot hear. So, yeah. But doesn't matter. The point here is, it is the full expression of the human devotion, man's devotion to God, even with instruments. The full expression of your devotion to God, even with instruments. Now, uh, I have not been to Africa, but I have heard African worship. Wow! Three trunk, anything also they use. They got different kinds of instruments. But they do it, uh, you know, black people when they worship, uh, oh, they are really alive. American blacks are very alive. Yeah. You go to uh, Caribbean, they have reggae music. Then they have steel drums. Wow, you see, also they come out with different kinds of instruments. And they worship God. And then you go to China. And so on. So, it doesn't matter. What it is, is you express your devotion to God. Not only with your lips, with your heart, yeah, but also with instruments. And you just make a beautiful noise unto the Lord. He loves it. And you know who is the conductor? 
Jesus is the conductor or you can say the Holy Spirit is the conductor because you know why? The worship leader will flow with the Spirit. Will flow with the Spirit. Yeah? He should. He should flow with the Spirit. And good worship leaders uh, are those who know how to change the song. Sometimes they may have planned certain things and then Holy Spirit redirect, then they change. Okay. I am no worship leader. My, my son is worship leader. Okay. Samuel is a good worship leader. Yeah. Uh, and whatever talents the Lord give unto you, but if you can't, it's okay. Just sing a beautiful noise unto the Lord. He will receive it. And you will be blessed. Okay? So, that's how you praise Him. It is a joyful, joyful expression. Let's just turn to Jeremiah 31 verse 4. Jeremiah 31 verse 4. Jeremiah 31 verse 4. Again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt. O virgin of Israel, you shall again be adorned with your tambourines and shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. Now, this chapter 31 of Jeremiah is about the restoration of Judah. They have been down. Now they are back from exile and God will rest restore them. And when they do, there will be tambourines, there will be dancers and rejoicing before the Lord. You and I, once upon a time, we were enslaved. We were in bondage, in sin, to the devil. But now, we are set free. And the Holy Spirit has regenerated us, restored us and so on. Then what must we do? Like Judah, we shall dance on the streets. We shall come before Him with songs, with music, with tambourines and so on. So that is the context for 150 for the psalmist. And finally, who is to praise God? Verse 6, Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Now, when you read this, uh, tell me, who are excluded? Who are excluded? Only the dead. Nah. No bread. Uh. But, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. It has not fully happened yet, but in Philippians chapter 2, the day will come, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. All will. But for now, only, mostly the church of God. I mean, church, the, the family of God. The bride of Christ. Now, is it only limited to men? Is it only limited to men? You sure? Okay, then you turn to Genesis. Genesis chapter 7. Verse 21. Genesis chapter 7, verse 21. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and bees and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land dead. All that was on the dry land died. Now, this reference here is referring to all flesh that died that moved on the earth. Who are they? The birds and the cattle and the bees and creepy things and, and, and so on. And every man. And every man. So all these creatures and men, what do they have? All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. Now, 
the emphasis is not talking about dying. I just want to point to you who has got the breath of the spirit of life. Man and animals. Though you cannot comprehend, you don't understand what the dolphin is saying, what the dog is saying, whatever. But God created them. And in their own way, they will also praise them. You follow me? So, it is all. God is sovereign. He created us for His pleasure that we praise Him. Praise the Lord. So, Father, we thank You. We thank You, Lord, for this work, book on worship. We thank You, Lord, for Your faithfulness in taking us through this last 14 months that through the verses, precept by precept, through the chapters, one by one. Lord, you have taught us much. But this we know. You are the creator and we are your creation. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Our God, our redeemer, our provider, our protector, and everything Lord, that you are to us and for all the great acts that you have done for us. And Lord, our only reasonable response is to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you. And so Lord, even with the worship on our lips, I pray that all of us with the two-edged sword in our hands will continue in this journey as we go forth and we evangelize and to go forth and to tell and bring others to the light as well. So Lord, bless everyone here. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.